All right, so let's talk about configuring an iSCSI target. Now, before we do this, just a little bit of background information. iSCSI is a way of connecting, it's a protocol that allows me to connect to drives that are physically hosted on another server. So there's two components here. There's an iSCSI target, and that's going to be a server that's hosting data that somebody else is going to connect to and use. And the person who connects to it and uses it is the iSCSI initiator. So we're going to start by configuring an iSCSI target. Now, iSCSI target, uh, the iSCSI target server is not installed by default. The iSCSI initiator is. So we're going to add the iSCSI target server first. So we're going to go to manage, add roles and features, and under file and storage services and file and iSCSI services, we are going to select the iSCSI target server. And right here you'll see it provides services and management tools for iSCSI targets. Really in depth there, right? All right, and install our features and install. All right, this is going to take a minute, so I'm going to go ahead and pause while this runs, and we'll pick it up again when we're done. Okay, our iSCSI target server has finished uh, installing, so I'm going to hit close, and now we are going to create a. Uh, um, we're going to create an iSCSI target. Now, the iSCSI target starts by creating an ISCSI, a virtual disk to use for iSCSI. So, from the server manager dashboard, we're going to go back to File and Storage Services, and we're going to go to iSCSI. And we're going to start by creating a virtual disk to use as an iSCSI target. So, Tasks, New iSCSI Virtual Disk. We'll do it off of here, we'll do it on the C drive, I'm going to create a custom path actually where I'm going to store this and on the C drive I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this new folder iSCSI and then I'm going to select that folder. Alright, so that gives me my location and then I'm going to give it a name and iSCSI underscore target and then a description if I want. Sample target for iSCSI demonstration. There we go. And next. Alright, I can set the size of it and it can be fixed size dynamically expanded in a different scene. Your best performance is going to be fixed size. We're going to do dynamically expanding because it's going to create faster. And this is basically the same kind of VHD that we use for our virtual machines. Let me go ahead and create a 50 gigabyte dynamically expanding disk, just because that's going to be fast and easy. Uh, and then, you know, when we talk about creating virtual disks for um, Hyper-V, we'll talk about the difference between fixed size dynamically expanding and differencing. So let's go ahead and click Next. Now I don't have an existing iSCSI target, so I have to create a new one. So I'm going to click New and iSCSI Demo Target. And again, I can set a description if I want. Uh, target for iSCSI Demo. And next. All right. Um, yeah, go and change it to dashes because we can't use spaces. There we go. All is good. All right, access servers. Who is going to access this? Now, because iSCSI allows block level storage to storage media, security is actually fairly important. And this is one aspect of it is the access servers. And I'm going to specify which access server I want. And I'm actually going to do this a little bit weird. Um, so I can set the query initiator computer ID or I can enter a value and I'm going to use an IP address. And so I'm going to connect from 127.0.0.1. Basically, I'm going to loop back. Now, normally I'd put in the IP address or the IQN or the DNS name of the device that's actually going to be connecting to it. The IQN, by the way, is a relatively long identifier. We'll look at it a little bit later when we're looking at the iSCSI initiator. Uh, it's a relatively long identifier, so the IP address is a great way to do it. However, if the IP address changes, you have a problem. The IQN is actually a little more stable in that regard. So, I'm going to click OK. 
and that's going to be my access server. So I'm going to click next and I can I'll enable additional authentication authentication if I want. In this case I'm going to be happy with just my access server um, IP address although honestly if I was doing this in real life I would probably enable SHAP or reverse SHAP to give me a little bit more security. Alright, and create. So, this is going to create my iSCSI virtual disk and my iSCSI target. So I click close and right here I see my virtual disk. Nobody's connected to it at the moment. I see my iSCSI demo target. Here's my IQN. Now you see what we're talking about there. Which is currently not connected, and the initiator is going to be my local loopback address. But they haven't logged in and is currently idle. So we have our target created. Now the next step is going to be to connect to the iSCSI target. And we're going to do that in the next video.